So basically I'm here uh, outside the Bank of England with uh, Chris Skye. And uh, Chris, could you just tell me what's brought you all the way from Canada to London? What are you doing here? Well, we're having a massive event today. It's all about the COVID restrictions. It's all about lockdowns. It's all about our freedoms. It's about the new climate change agenda that they're trying to now merge with the COVID agenda so they can take the rights and freedoms they forced us to give up temporarily for our safety into something that they can plan to give up our rights and freedoms forever. So. We need to let people know what's really going on. Everybody knows that COVID was a scam. Everybody knows that the experimental gene therapy injections that they were giving to people were far more dangerous than the virus. Everybody knows that they're coming for the food supply. We already saw it happen in Sri Lanka. We see it happening in the Netherlands right now. That's why the farmers are protesting over there. Under the guise of saving the environment, they're putting out new environmental regulations. Now we're not worried about CO2. Now we're worried about nitrogen. Even though 75% of our atmosphere is nitrogen, under this uh, guise of protecting the planet, they now want to target farmers, livestock, and agriculture in general. And they plan to reduce the entire food supply on the planet while our population continues to increase. This can only end in one way, and that's massive food shortages, massive rising prices, and that's what we're seeing all around the world. We're seeing literally rising prices in virtually everything, from housing to energy to food to gas. Gas prices in Canada went up to uh, almost two dollars and fifty cents a liter that's like ten dollars a gallon in the united states if that happened over there it would be civil war over here in britain we're seeing food prices go up housing crisis happen and they're still planning on bringing back all the lockdowns in the next coming weeks you're going to be hearing about them talking about rising cases as the weather gets colder then you're going to hear them talking about the need for a booster in canada they even tried to change the definition of fully vaccinated to now up to date because they're telling you that you're going to need to take a new shot every few months. In fact, in Canada, they're suggesting already that you take another booster every 90 days. So if anybody thinks this COVID is over, they wouldn't be asking you to take boosters over and over and over if COVID was over. In Canada, we still have mandatory masks on airplanes, on buses, in trains. As I was coming here to the airport, I was lucky enough to be flying on British Airways and we were flying international. So we didn't have to wear masks. Meanwhile, the people in the gate beside us were flying on Air Canada within Canada, so they had to wear masks. So we're literally in the exact same building, side by side, few feet away, but because they're on a Canadian airline, they have to wear a mask, and because we're on a British airline, we didn't. If that doesn't show how the, the bare bones hypocrisy, I don't know what does. So we're here today because this is not just a national problem. This is a global problem. This is not just happening in Canada, Britain, or the, just the Commonwealth. This is happening in Europe. This is happening in Russia. This is happening in Asia. Africa. It's happening virtually everywhere around the world. And we're getting hit the hardest because we're the ones that historically stand up for ourselves. And that's why they're trying to crush us. We did stand up for ourselves in Canada. Earlier this year, we had the trucker convoy and we had millions of people show up in Ottawa. I know I was there, I spoke. The police told me that their, uh, their estimate was over two million people that day. So they like to call it a fringe minority. But in reality, we had a large percentage of the entire population of Canada in the capital city for a few weeks. And everybody was united for the same thing, freedom. That's what this is all about. Everybody is now trying to be distracted by this whole thing with the Queen passing. I will not speak ill of the dead, but let's be real. We had millions and millions and millions of people, men, women, and most importantly, children, dying. Billions of people being impoverished, losing their jobs, losing their businesses, losing their houses. And we're supposed to not care about any of that. We're supposed to pretend like that was all for the greater good, but now the entire world has to stop because one 97-year-old woman passed away. A woman with the means that could have ended poverty, ended virtually every problem the UK has in all of Europe. But rather than talk about that, we're supposed to talk about how everything needs to stop and nobody else matters but her. Unfortunately, I disagree with that sentiment, and I believe that the millions and millions of lives that have been destroyed by COVID usurp a 97-year-old person, whether she's royalty or otherwise. And maybe that's because I'm from Canada, and I don't have the same respect for the monarchy as people here do. But to me, the needs of the many 
always will outweigh the needs of the few. And that's a real needs. Not when they're trying to do it to manipulate you to do something against your own best interest. So Chris, could, could I ask you, what can people actually do to sort of like fight and go against the tyranny? What is it that they can do? Very good question, and that's why we're here, and that's why I started this campaign, Just Say No. I started it in 2020. It's been viral around the world. And what does it mean? It means when a government, a public health official, or anybody in a so-called position of authority tells you to do something that you know isn't in your best interest, or the interest of your family, or the interest of your country, it is not only the right thing to do, it's really your duty to stand up and just say no. It's that easy. And it's something that every man, woman, and child everywhere in the world can do. It costs you nothing. It takes absolutely no resources. All it takes is a little bit of courage and a little bit of inspiration to want to fight for what's right. And if you stand up and say no, and he stands up and says no, and she stands up and says no, and everybody around the world unites and stands up and says no, we achieve something that I call united non-compliance. And when you have united non-compliance, the vast majority of people standing in one voice and just saying no to what they know is wrong, it doesn't matter who's in charge. It doesn't matter if the WHO or the WEF or the monarchy or the government or the public health officials make certain rules and restrictions and mandates. If you're not going to listen because you know that you're an adult and you know that you have the ability to make the best decisions for yourself, then it doesn't matter who's in charge. It doesn't matter what they do or what they say. That's how easy it is. They want people to feel like it's impossible. They want you to feel like it's hopeless. They want you to feel like you're alone. They want you to feel like there's nothing you can do but submit to their tyranny. And it's not just a mask, ladies and gentlemen. That was the start and basis of all the other restrictions. And that lie that you told yourself, it's just a mask, is what led to millions and millions of people dying in a really well-scripted genocide around the planet. If you people haven't realized that these injections that they're illegally calling vaccines to protect themselves with immunity are not killing and maiming people around the world, you're lying to yourself. We have seen mortality rates from life insurance companies rise as of 2021, aka when they started injecting people, in virtually every age category in multiple countries around the world. In my country of Canada, they were publishing the statistics in each individual province for hospitalizations, and they were showing how many people were hospitalized with zero jabs, one jab, two jabs, and three jabs. By May 2022, over 80% of the people in hospital had been jabbed and over 50% of those had been triple jabbed. So not only did it show that the, more, the, the jabbed were more likely to get sick and hospitalized, it also proved that the more jabs you take, the sicker you get. By June 2022, that number was over 90%. So in Canada, they simply scrubbed the data from the websites, erased the whole section called vaccine outcomes, and replaced it with a new section called vaccine effectiveness, which when you click on it just gave a standard message of how safe and effective the vaccines are. And we know they're not. Now we have people quadruple jab, even taking five jabs, and they're still getting sick. So what is their new thing? They have a new vaccine, a bivalent vaccine. It's supposed to be two times as good. Now they want you to take testing for monkeypox because, you know, that's, that's just, we should all just get more injections. Now they're even telling people in Canada to take a flu shot and a COVID jab at the exact same time. Our public health officials actually went on TV and said the, had the audacity to say, I believe God gave us two arms, one for a COVID jab and one for a flu jab. Are you effing kidding me? If the flu jab worked, we wouldn't have 650,000 people dying of the flu every year prior to COVID. And if the COVID was anything other than the flu, the flu wouldn't have disappeared when COVID came out. What happened to all the flu deaths? They're gone. Now what are we seeing? We're seeing people dropping dead from sudden arrhythmia death syndrome, also known as sudden adult death syndrome. This is now so prevalent in Canada, they started a foundation called SADS, and it has its own website, recently updated, and now they have an entire ad campaign dedicated to normalizing myocarditis, heart problems, and sudden death in children, because we are having a massive, massive epidemic of young adults, young athletes, and young, otherwise healthy people literally just dropping dead virtually every single day, and it's getting scary. In fact, one of the largest growing 
Facebook groups right now, of which I'm banned from, is called Sudden Adult Deaths. They're getting almost 20,000 new members a day. And this group is dedicated to nothing but people reporting adverse reactions. And speaking of adverse reactions, you can go on the official WHO website right now and it will list over 4 million reported adverse reactions to the COVID vaccine. That is more adverse reactions than every other vaccine in the history of mankind combined. And this has only been out for two years. And keep in mind that the only a very small fraction get reported to these people. And what are we seeing? We're seeing death. We're seeing blood clots leading to death. We're seeing strokes leading to death. We're seeing facial paralysis. We're seeing limb paralysis. We're seeing myocarditis, which can lead to death within five years and ruin the person's life forever. And what are we also seeing? We're seeing people being told that this is going to be mandated. In Canada, we had millions and millions of people lose their jobs because they were told by Justin Trudeau, that piece of garbage, that they had a choice. The very definition of free choice without coercion means that you can choose A or B without any consequence. In Canada, they say you have a choice, but your choice has consequences. Choose the jab or choose your job. Choose the jab or choose to go travel. Choose the jab or choose to even go to a restaurant or go to a gym. They used every type of coercion possible to try to get people to take that injection. And for ones that didn't want to do it, he called us racist, misogynist, terrorist, every name in the book to try to get you to comply. And what happened? All the people that complied felt violated. They did it against their own will. Many of them got sick and a vast majority of them regret their decision to give into the government. And you know what they all say? They say, I didn't have a choice. Reality is you had a choice. You chose to take the path of least restriction. You chose to take the easy way out. And now you're dealing with the unforeseen consequences of those choices. However, all the people that chose to just say no, Guess what happened to them? They either didn't get fired from their job because it was a bluff. They got fired from their job, started a new job which they like better, or started a new business which they like better, and virtually none of them regret their decision for doing the right thing. You can ask. I can ask a crowd of people today. If there's a thousand people or a hundred thousand people, I can ask them, how many of you reject your, or regret your decision of getting jabbed? You know how many will put their hands up? A lot. If I ask the same question, how many of you regret not taking it? I don't think you're going to see one hand go up. And that tells you everything you need to know, not just about the jab, but about this entire pandemic. And for all you people that comply, for all you people that kept saying, oh, the only way we're going to get through this is if we do as we're told and we comply. Well, I told you already, the only way through this is something called united non-compliance. Now, we've had over two and a half years of you guys doing it your way. And where did that lead you? It got you to wear a mask perpetually. It got you to take two jabs, which they now say is a, a, a jab forever. And you're still going to be locked down. Your business is still closed and you still got no bright future. England, London in particular, I was here a couple years ago. It's not the same city it was. It got way worse. Sorry to say, guys. So did Toronto. So did a lot of major cities. And that decline is not stopping. In fact, it's just continuing and it's steadily increasing. Why? Because you complied. I can prove it. I can prove that I'm right and you're wrong. For instance, regardless of the last two years of me proving you're wrong, you cannot go from step one to step 10 of tyranny without going through one, two, three, four, five, all the way up. So step one was the mask. And you told yourself, oh, it's just a mask. In reality, the mask is the basis of all the other restrictions. The mask is a symbol of compliance, of subservience. It perpetuates the idea that there's something to be afraid of. And the mask led to contact tracing. That led to forced testing. That led to vaccination. That led to mandatory vaccination. That led to mandatory vaccination for travel. That's going to lead to a digital ID. That's going to lead to a biometric digital ID with a digital currency. And once they have you on a biometric ID with the digital currency, they control every single aspect of your life. The very idea of individual freedom is null and void. Up until now, for millions of years, every individual had power, even if it's a little bit. And that's why when you come together, individuals have a lot of power. But in this new world, you become a little electronic blip on a screen where they can literally flip a switch and you're done. I can prove it. 
when they do those lockdowns the next time and they tell you you can't travel more than a couple miles from your house, but now you got a digital currency, a digital ID, and it's all tied to your digital wallet on your cell phone, what do you think is going to happen? First, you're going to get into your electric car and it's not going to start because they can control if it starts or not. Or even if it does, as soon as you get out of the radius where you're allowed to be, it's going to die. And then what are you going to do? You're going to get out of the car and you're going to walk to the store. You're going to buy some, try to buy something. If that store is out of the, out of the range of where you're allowed to be, your card's simply not going to work. Now they have complete control over where you go, what you spend your money on, how you spend your money on, and if you're even allowed to spend your money. In their new world, you won't even be able to sell those sunglasses on your head on eBay without getting the government's permission and without them taking their cut. That is the world they want. They want a world where they have complete and utter control of you from cradle to grave. So they used COVID as the vehicle to train you. Let me say that again. They used COVID to train you that the idea of individual rights and freedoms is no longer paramount to society it is now selfish and dangerous. And for two years, they told you, you need to give up your rights and freedoms for the greater good, for the health and safety of the children and the old and sick. But then they told you, don't worry, it's only temporary. And you're doing it just for the health and safety of the children. And now, two years later, that they got you trained like a dog to give up your rights and freedoms and even to view people that believe in rights and freedoms as dangerous and selfish, now what are they telling you? Oh, now we're going to have to take those rights and freedoms from you permanently and not even for your health and safety, but for the health and safety of the planet. So to save the planet, we're going to starve the people. Why are they really starving the people? It's quite simple. The people are no longer scared of COVID. People realize it's a scam. People are no longer going to go along with the mask. They're not going to take the jab. They're not going to close their business. So they're going to do what every tyrant in the history of humanity has done to get control of the people. They're going to starve you to death. That is why everything's getting more expensive. It's not by accident, it's by design. Inflation is happening because the government is spending billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars. Why? Because you're complying. So now not only is your compliance costing you months of your life, costing you your rights and freedoms, now you are starting to realize that your compliance just costs you money. And that's where everyone's going to come on board. That's why I'm here today. Because our movement, our freedom movement, was capped. It could only grow so big. Because there's only so many people that are willing to fight for freedom. And there's what we call the silent majority. The people that believe in what we believe, but they're too afraid to stand up and say it. Too afraid to do the right thing. Why? They don't want the social stigma. They don't want to be called conspiracy theorist, anti-masker, anti-vaxxer, etc. However... Now that they're trying to literally take the food off your family's table, everybody can get on board. How can you tell somebody that just wants to be able to feed their family, someone whose grocery bill went from $300 a week to $700 a week, that they're a bad person for speaking out? What are you going to call an anti-fooder? So this was their act of desperation. Yes, it was a very strong ploy to start starving us into submission. Because let's be real, if you can't feed your family, and then all of a sudden the government says, well, download this app, give us your fingerprint and your iris scan and your facial recognition, and we're going to give you a universal basic income so you'll be able to feed your family. How many people would rather watch their family starve or download that app and go along with that system? The vast majority. And that's why they're doing this. The only problem is now they've woken everybody up and they've given us a way to unite a much larger segment of the population, not just for freedom from COVID tyranny, but for freedom for food security. And I don't care how much you believe in COVID. I don't care how many masks you wear, how many jabs you take, you got to eat. So eventually, you're going to become one of us. And that's what this tour is all about. This tour is to let people know that you can't get by with keeping your head down and getting through this. Even you ultra high net worth individuals in Canada that have been sitting on the sidelines and around the world. In Canada, we have oil, oil families, mining families, farming families. Well, guess what? Under the guise of climate change and environmental protection, now the government of Canada is going around and scooping up people's land. 
and stealing their oil rights, mineral rights, and farming rights. So these people could have invested a few million dollars in someone like me as an insurance policy, and I could have protected them from something like this, or now they're going to lose hundreds of millions of dollars in their family legacy, and their kids and grandkids are going to be screwed. Why? Because they thought they could sit on the sidelines and let all the poor people take the brunt of the blow. And now they're realizing that now that the poor people are already screwed, the government's going to target individual high net worth people, especially in the farming industry and all the other industries they want to take over. It's not a coincidence that Bill Gates, the largest vaccine salesman in the entire world, is now the largest farmland owner in North America. Why would they want to own all the farmland? So they can control the food supply. Because if they can control the food supply, they can control what you eat. And we all know they want you to own nothing and be happy. That's the World Economic Forum, which is King Charles' pet project, by the way. By the way, let's, let's be real. King Charles is a 100% backer of the World Economic Forum. He backs everything they want them to do. In fact, we all remember the Queen when she was alive telling all of us how selfish we are if we won't take the jab. They're all part of it. They are all part of it. So... Bill Gates is part of that. He is a salesman for them. He is going around buying up the farmland. And you know what else they did in Canada? They haven't done it here yet, but they're going to do it here soon. They just opened the largest cricket farm in the entire world. Why? Because they want us to eat crickets now. Because beef is going to be too expensive. You're going to go to the store and you're going to see beef tenderloin for a couple hundred pounds a pound. And you're going to be, oh, I can't afford that. You're going to go and see all beef hot dogs. And they're going to be like 40 pounds for a pack of six. And you're, holy crap. Then you're going to see hot dogs that look identical. And they're going to say all beef. And then you're going to read the fine print and it's going to say beef sourced from cricket. And now they're going to be only $10 for a six pack. And that's what you're supposed to be eating. Because they want you to eat bugs and uh, literal garbage while they're eating meat and steak and duck. That's what this is all about, ladies and gentlemen. This is about a two-tier society. We have been told to believe that we are in a society where our government works for us. And we are a middle class. The reality is they're setting up society in a way where we are going to be perpetually broken at the government's mercy. When you depend on the government to survive, they no longer serve you. They rule you. And they are setting up a, te a technocratic system where they will be able to rule you perpetually from cradle to grave for generations to come. And all it will take for them to succeed all it always takes for evil to succeed is for good men to do nothing. And I consider myself a good man, and that's why I'm traveling all around the world, starting here in London, to get the word out and to unite the people of Earth in one voice with one message. And that message is freedom. And that way to attain it is united non-compliance. Thank you so much for that, Chris. Pleasure to meet you. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. I feel honored to be in London today. God bless you all.